What is going on, Jet fans? Happy Thanksgiving. I am Matt O'Leary here to preview Jets Dolphins for the first ever Black Friday game. The New York Jets enter at four and six. They have the 30th offense in the league, 11th defense right now. That's I don't agree with those. It's that goes off of points for is how they and points against how they rank it. But I would say that their defense feels like a definite top 10 unit and their offense feels like it should be dead last in the league. Miami Dolphins seven and three. They are very good. The number one offense in the league, 23rd on defense in the league. Tough task. Let's get into this one. I think this is going to be the biggest storyline for the game. Tim Boyle getting his first start. What does he look like in his first start for the New York Jets? Was I rooting for Tim Boyle to start? Not necessarily, no. <laughs> I would have rather went to Trevor Simeon at this point, but here is what I think you could either get. I think it's going to be two things. Number one, I think you're going to get uh, ugly kind of ooh, not so great performance or a Mike White kind of performance. Like who the hell is this guy against the Bengals? He comes in, throws for 400 yards, three touchdowns and like two picks. Uh, he's going to turn the ball over with interceptions. That's just the reality. Tim Boyle is significantly more aggressive and is willing to take shots. Uh, the positive from him, he gets the ball out a little quicker and with a little bit more authority, but the negative is he is going to throw interceptions. Um, Zach Wilson's thrown less interceptions than what he has in years gone by, but he still had 12 turnovers in 10 games. So um, you can't really even make the argument that Zach Wilson turns the ball over less because he had more than one turnover per game. Anyway, at that point, so they're going to go Tim Boyle. Again, I don't have crazy high expectations for Tim Boyle. We'll do the stats in a little bit. But obviously, they made a change at the quarterback spot. And him playing in this game is going to be, and starting in this game, is going to be a really big storyline. I'm curious to see just how the team around him responds, if that truly does spark anything. Because it did feel like the change at the quarterback spot sparked the Jets last year. They won against the uh, Chicago Bears in that first start. And then we know the losing streak began after that. But um, you had the the game up uh, in Minnesota where <laughs> Braxton Berrios catches the ball. The Jets win that game. Uh, and then he gets hurt, unfortunately, against Buffalo, and things really go off the rails from there. But number two in this game for the Jets is what the hell does the offensive line look like? Is Mekhi Becton going to play? He has a low ankle sprain. It's not a high ankle sprain, which is a good sign. Uh, initially, the report was he'd be out one to two weeks, but he is going to try to give it a go on Friday. I personally feel like it would be surprising if he played on a short week. He did get carted off uh, the field just four days ago, uh, so that's kind of a big ask for for me to for him to play in this game. He was practicing yesterday, so th again, good sign, but. I don't know if he's going to be good to go. Are we going to get another offensive line combination? And, you know, is it Carter Warren who came in at left tackle? Or does Dwayne Brown come back? Because this is the last opportunity for Dwayne Brown to come back this year. If you don't know the IR rules, once you're activated off the IR, um, you have to be then activated on game day. Uh, or once you're brought, the better way of phrasing that, I phrased that wrong, is once you're brought back off of IR, you have three weeks, Twenty one. there's a 21-day window for you to be activated for game day, and if you're not, well, then, then you're done for the year at that point. So this is it. It's now or never for Dwayne Brown, so maybe we get Dwayne Brown back at left tackle. Don't know. We're going to see tomorrow what offensive line combination they trot out there. Okay, next up, this is is really the Jets key when looking at the Miami Dolphins, right? For me, the story with the Miami Dolphins is their speed. They have a great play caller in Mike McDaniel. Tua is a really, really, really good distributor of the football. He, you know, just gets the ball out insanely quick. Guys are schemed wide open and their speed is really what kills other teams. And that's why they have a number one offense is because of how good Tua has developed with Mike McDaniel and just getting the ball into the hands of Mostert, A-Chain, Hill, Waddle, all those guys with just unbelievable speed. And what is going to make it challenging for the Jets to defend against those guys, not a little bit with Mostert, the, the running backs, and like, but specifically with Hill and Waddle. Yes, Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed, no one's going to deny that those are two really good cornerbacks. They are, and I think 
more often than not, they have really good games. And, you know, Sauce against Buffalo, I thought, struggled. He tried to get aggressive and, and make a play on a, on a ball and make an interception, come down and cover three. And he didn't get have the help over the top. And a big play happened and a big touchdown happens. And it looks ugly. Um, but in this game, it's not necessarily Sauce and DJ Reed who I'm worried about, although they are going to have a tough day going up against Hill and Waddle. It looks like the Jets are going to be without the corner slot cornerback Michael Carter, and that is going to be a really big loss. He didn't play this past week in Buffalo, uh, and Brandon Eccles had to come in and play. And for Brandon Eccles being, you know, a spot starter, your first corner off the bench, yeah, that's that's a nice thing to have. But you know, Michael Carter, we always talk about Sauce Gardner is a really good player, and he gets a lot of recognition, uh, and he deserves it because he's really, really, really damn good. But DJ Reed and Michael Carter are really two unsung heroes on this defense. They are both incredibly, incredibly talented players. DJ Reed is a really, I think, a top 10 corner in the league. Right there. He is a damn good player. And then in the slot, Michael Carter is one of the better slot corners in football. And not having him and then having to deal with the speed of Hill and Waddle and where they could line up all over the field that's going to be really tough for this New York Jets defense to respond to that. We're going to do stat predictions, but first, my underdog fantasy picks for this game. What's up, guys? Matt O'Leary back with underdog fantasy picks for Week 12. Jets, Dolphins, let's hop into it. I have two picks this week for this game. I like Tim Boyle to get higher than 28.5 passing attempts in this one. I think the Jets are going to be down in this game and have to throw the ball to get back into it. He had 14 passing attempts in a quarter and a little bit. So I think he's going over 30. 28 and a half feels like a good number. And for as good as what the Jets defense is, I think they could be got with the run game a little bit right now. Raheem Mostert's went over 80 yards each of the last two weeks. I think they lean on the run game a little bit. I think if they're up in the second half, they will run the ball a little bit. So just two picks, which could 3x your money. So if a $10 play gets you 30, sign up using my link down below in the description, and they will match your deposit, 100% match bonus up to 100 bucks. Sign up using my code over at Underdog. Okay, Tim Boyle, I'm going to go... 19 of 35 in this game. 54.3 completion percentage, 234 passing yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. I do think he's going to turn the ball over. I think they get in the end zone with a passing touchdown. Uh, I think he's going to complete under 60% of his passes. Again, I don't have a lot of confidence in this as I said all week, this isn't for, for the Zach Wilson truthers. This isn't the, ha-ha, see, I told you, victory lap. It because no one who was asking for a quarterback change was then saying that Tim Boyle was this great idea. It's not. We've really just been critical of Joe Douglas for not having another option. And, again, I wanted to see, see Trevor Simeon. So maybe you could, aha, get me if they went to Trevor Simeon and he threw three picks in a game. But Tim Boyle's not a serious NFL backup quarterback, which is... Again, why so many were pounding the table for them to get one in March week one, the trade deadline after the Patriots game, whenever, but they didn't. Um, Raheem Mostert, I think, has a big day against this Jets defense. I think he's going to go 15 carries, 90 yards, and a touchdown. Um, the Jets against the run has been an area of criticism on this Jets defense. Uh, it's hard for me to spend a lot of time criticizing this Jets D for the amount of time that they keep them in games. Their four wins this year, they don't win without a stellar performance from their defense. They don't stay in that Chiefs game without a stellar performance from their defense. So uh, they do a great job of creating turnovers. I think they, they probably create a turnover in this game, but uh, I think Mostert has a good day on the ground. And then I think Tyreek Hill has a big play, making a, a, a big catch 70-yard touchdown over Brandon Eccles. Uh, he gets him beat in the slot, and a big play is made. All right, let's go to the score predictions. It's score prediction time. I hate picking the Jets this year. Hate picking the Jets. Mean Not necessarily meaning like, hey, I'm going to pick the Jets to win. But against the spread this year, I have, if, again, I'm gonna, every week I say it. If you tune into the show with Joe Maniello, I have a, oh, I'm over 500. But with picking the Jets, 2-7-1 against the spread, which is horrific. 
Uh, I'm going to go with the Dolphins minus nine and a half. I don't have faith in the Jets for this game. Sorry, I've picked the, I've rode the Jets as big underdogs a lot this year, saying their defense is good. I think they're going to keep it close. I did the same thing last week against the Bills. I said seven's too high. Jets are going to keep it tight. They didn't. I think this one not gets out of hand, but is close for a while, but the offensive struggles eventually catch up to them, and they lose. I'll go by a score of 26-13. I don't think the Jets offense does anything that will be a fifth week in a row that they score 13 or less points. Really frustrating. Uh, until proven otherwise, I hope I'm proven wrong. Honestly, I do. I hope the Jets go out and pull off a crazy upset. I hope even if they don't win, they keep it close. They score points. I want to see progress on offense, but I'll believe it when I see it. I'm going to go 26-13. Let's see who Casey likes in this one. Casey is also on the Dolphins as well. There you go. She is 4-5-1 and one against the spread, by the way. That's going to do it for me on this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>